here are where the Ten Commands are specifically listed out. And as I said, this is not something that was established by Moses or that, that were laws of Moses by any means. These were God's laws. These were God's commands. Verse 1 of Exodus 20, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I am your God. I mean, these are my laws. These are my commandments that I give to you as a blessing, as a blessing to you, as a gift to you. Verse 8, here's one of them, the fourth. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Here was the one test commandment of all the commandments, the one test of the ten, the one where, for the most part, traditional Christianity has failed to meet the test. It's the only place among the Ten Commandments where it says to remember. And that's because more than any other commandment, it's the, the one command that people forget. People will often talk about the other nine, but then ignore this one. And when they say the law is done away with in the New Testament, this is really what they're trying to get rid of because we want to reason around how clearly God expresses this fourth commandment. We want to push it aside and do our own thing on that day and do our own thing throughout the week. God doesn't say in this command to create your own day or to decide for yourselves which day is holy. He says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Our job, our job is, is, is to make or to keep it holy, not to make something different. Now that word keep, if you want to study the Hebrew meaning there a little bit more on your own time, it just means to preserve or to keep it in the same condition that it was originally. That's what we strive to do here as Christians, to keep it the way that God established it to be kept in Genesis chapter 2, to keep it that same, in that same mint condition by observing the command the way God says to. Verse 9, it says, Six days shall you labor and do all your work. Now, as I've brought out before, this is just as much a part of the command as the remembering of the seventh day. To get the full, to get the full uh, meat of this command, we've got to also work hard during the six days of the week. And this is one reason why it's so refreshing and restful for us in the flesh, uh, unlike God, because we need rest. We need it. I can tell you every week when I observe this command, I'm thankful for it because I know how weary it gets working hard, working for God. And then you arrive at the Sabbath and it is a period of wonderful, refreshing time of recuperation and regeneration, an opportunity to draw closer to God. How is that a curse? How is that some kind of a burden? That's a blessing and a gift to spend extra time with your family, to spend extra time with God in prayer and study. What a wonderful blessing! And yet man's carnal nature, his hostile nature toward God's law, makes it out to be something burdensome or something like a curse when it's a blessing and a gift from God. God expects us, as I said, to work hard and then we come into the Sabbath and what a period of refreshment it can be. Verse 10, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor, the, nor your stranger that is within your gates. It's not the Jews' Sabbath. It's not even man's Sabbath. It's God's. And God, though, made it for man. He made it for us. He made it for us to enjoy. God expects us to enjoy it, and we can if we don't make it our day, but if we just observe the day as God says. Verse 11, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. See, this verse takes us right back to Genesis 2 right back to that creation week. Seven days of creation or recreation, depending on how you look at it. Seven days, and God got to the Sabbath and He continued creating. 
the Sabbath of the Lord created for man from the beginning. Here's what it says in the Sabbath booklet. This quote can also be found in the United States and Britain in prophecy. Mr. Armstrong, Herbert Armstrong wrote, God took the most enduring, lasting, imperishable thing man can know, a recurring space of time, the only day that is a memorial of the act of creating. He took the only day which points constantly every seventh day of the week to God's resting on the seventh day of creation week from creating which points to the existence of the almighty, all-powerful, all-ruling God, the Creator. See, it points us right back to the Creator God, the one who made the Sabbath, the one who made man. It points us right back to our Maker. It reminds us every week of where we came, of where we came from, and also, I mean, we don't have time to get into this aspect of it, but if you look into Hebrews 4, it also points us ahead to that period of refreshment and rest that this world will have when Satan is finally removed from off the throne of the earth. And Jesus Christ establishes the government of God on this earth. And there, there can be peace and prosperity and contentment and happiness for 1,000 years. What a millennial Sabbath that will be after 6,000 years of man ruling over man, influenced and inspired, directed by the devil. Once that's removed, think about how refresh, refreshing and uplifting and inspiring, really, how inspiring the Sabbath can be, pointing us back to creation and then projecting us ahead as people of vision thinking about where God's purpose and plan is going, where it's taking us. The wonderful world tomorrow. God took the most, as Mr. Armstrong said there, the most enduring, lasting, imperishable thing man can know. A recurring space of time. A wonderful reminder every single week of who we are, of what relationship matters most and of who we worship, a weekly memorial in that sense, reminding us of God's awesome power, of God's awesome might, of His supreme purpose for mankind. Now look at Exodus 31, and we see where this uh, special Sabbath covenant was made with the people of Israel. Here again, as I said, you just find it throughout the Bible, whether you go back to Genesis 2 or or move forward to Genesis 26 and how that Abraham kept the commandments of God. Or as we've covered here, Exodus 16. You can go back to Exodus 3 and see where uh, Moses took his sandals off because he came into the presence of God and find the same Hebrew uh, word used there as is used in other scriptures referring to the Sabbath, about God's presence being in the Sabbath day. Then the miracle of the manna in Exodus 16 the double portion they received on Friday, and then the law itself, as it was restated to Moses, coming from God there in Exodus 20. And then here this special Sabbath command. I mentioned uh, Le Leviticus 23 about it being a holy convocation. Here in Exodus 31, it's uh, referred to as a covenant. Exodus 31, 12, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak you also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. What tremendous meaning is packed into these couple of verses here. Yet people just read right past it and think that, that well, there's nothing really special here about these days that God set aside for us to observe, to keep holy. Notice which day, though. Notice which day is God's day. Notice which day is the Lord's day. Not man's day, but God's day. This recurring space of time. It's a sign. The United States and Britain in prophecy says, God gave man his Sabbath for the purpose of keeping mankind in the true knowledge and true worship of the true God. But how does the Sabbath identify God? How does it point to the true God rather than the false? Does not Sunday do just as well? Positively not, he says. 
How does it point to God? How does it identify God? Well, we just read that in the law there. It takes us right back to creation, to God, to the Maker. Verse 17, it says, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day He rested and was refreshed. It was on the seventh day of creation week that He rested, you see, and was refreshed. Mr. Armstrong wrote, How does that identify who God is? If you believe anyone else or anything else is God, I will prove that my God is the true God because whatever else you may think is God was made or created by the true God. He who created and made everything else is greater than whatever He made, superior to anything else that could be called God. Points us back to the Creator God. Verse 13 again, It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. In the the booklet, Which Day is the Christian Sabbath? Uh, this one that I'm quoting from a fair bit here at the end of uh, the lecture today. Uh, Mr. Armstrong talks about how this is a sign, not only a sign pointing to God, but also a sign of God's people. He says in the booklet, and you can write for this or, or call the number on your screen. You can order a free copy on the website, thetrumpetdaily.com. But go to the phone right now as we wrap up today's uh, program. And make sure that you get this booklet for yourself. I, I reviewed it myself recently, and I've been keeping the Sabbath my whole life. And yet, what an inspiration it was to go through it again and to be reminded of why I observe the day that I do and why God, why God made it for me and for you as well. Which day is the Christian Sabbath? There's a full, uh, what is it, 80, 90 pages in here that just goes through this teaching, this commandment, thoroughly, in detail, using scriptures, showing you, so that you can prove it for yourself from your own Bible. Going back to this point about the sign, how does the Sabbath set them apart? Separate them from those who are not God's own true people? Well, if you have begun to keep God's Sabbath holy, as He commands, you have found the answer already, Mr. Armstrong wrote, by actual experience, if you haven't, just start keeping God's Sabbath holy as He commands you, and you'll soon learn that you are automatically set apart from all other people. How significant, he wrote, the Sabbath command is the only one of the ten, which is a sign identifying who are the real and true Christians today. It is the real test command. The real test command. The people of the world are willing to acknowledge the other nine commandments, but the Sabbath command... The Sabbath command is the one they positively rebel against. It is the one that is the crucial test of obedience. Finally, then, he says, it identifies those who have surrendered their wills to God, who obey God regardless of persecution or cost. As I said, you go back far enough in history and you see where people had to lay down their lives in some cases just to observe this commandment. Throughout history, there have been those who've tried to make their own day special, who've wanted to choose their day, but God thunders to them and to me and to you. He thunders to us that I have made all things through Jesus Christ, including the Sabbath day, everything, and I did it for you. He made the decision for us. Now what He wants for us to do is to observe it and to keep it the way He said to keep it. And if we do, it will be a wonderful blessing and benefit to you and to your family. Call the number, go to thetrumpetdaily.com, make sure you get a copy of this booklet, and then study it. 